So, recently there was a debate which just appeared on Lauren Southern's channel called um, Lauren Southern vs. Larkin Rose Open Borders. So, it took place at Anarchapulco, which I guess takes place in Mexico. It's like the big anarcho capitalist conference, Anarchapulco. And they were debating borders. And Lauren Southern used to be very, very, very libertarian. And that's not, I'm not saying like it's a bad thing that she moved or a good thing that she moved either way, but she's since gone on to the more, like, a bit more right wing. And now she's no longer for open borders. Then you have Larkin Rose, who is kind of like your stereotypical ANCAP. Like, he has all the ANCAP positions. He is totally against violence in any sense, any kind of aggression. So he is flat out open borders, and that's what the, this, this debate was about. Because there's currently kind of a divide among libertarians, and I guess it's been that way for quite a while, of should you have open borders or not. And the 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 two arguments to put them in a very, very like simplistic sense is on the Larkin, Larkin Rose side, there's the um, state power is aggression. So state controlling the free movement of people is violence. You cannot have a state control its borders because that is aggression. Aggression against the free movement of people and people have the right to move across um, the, the, the right to move across any any territory as long as the people that own the property are fine with it and they reject the idea that government owns this property and then you have lauren southern side which she's still pretty libertarian in general i'm not going to argue over like what exactly makes someone a libertarian but she generally fits it for the most part um but although she argues for we need borders it would be nice if we didn't but the fact is regardless of whatever's principle like regardless of the, the moral argument for it, we need borders because there are people that support bigger government coming into certain Western nations, like in this example, the United States. And as we've seen in Europe, there are people that are very authoritarian, very totalitarian coming into these nations in like large groups. And that is influencing the nation to become more totalitarian. And for that reason, at this moment, we need borders. Those are the two like simplistic arguments. And I will say... Personally, I used to be much more of an ANCAP. I used to be on the Larkin Rose side. I used to be total open borders because that's the moral position. And as of now, the, over the last like year and a half or so, I have moved to Lauren Southern's side. So there's my bias out there. I used to support Larkin, and now I support uh, Lauren. And in this debate, I thought Lauren Southern won. And of course, if you if you do based on claps at the end of the debate, again, if you want to watch the full debate, I'll leave a link in the description. But based on the claps, I mean, it is an anarchist conference, but it seems that Larkin got, like, they just did it on how loud the claps were. Larkin seems to have got a bit of an edge there and I think won the end. Although, again, once again, anarchist conference, he tends to hold the anarchist position there. Um, so I do, have, I do have a few things I wanted to mention about the debate. And then afterwards, I will play a few, like, uh, about three minutes worth of the debate that I thought was, like, kind of summarized the whole thing. That's very important. So first, um, I have some notes here. Uh, one thing that I noticed that Larkin is doing that is just wrong. It's not accurate. He is generalizing all forms of statism as equally terrible. And by that, like, it seems to me that if he were to, if you were to give him the option, pick between a minarchist society or a very authoritarian, like totalitarian society. We're talking like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nazi Germany, Soviet Union, like. If you were to pick between a minarchist society or any of those I just mentioned, I feel like if you pressured him enough, he would obviously pick the correct option because I think we all know that we would prefer to live in a minarchist society. I, I imagine that he would probably say, well, they're both statist. I can't really pick. I oppose statism. They're both statist. And that's the problem I have. He seems to like merge everything that's not anarchist as equally bad statist, which is obviously wrong. Like, as someone that considers myself, I guess in his, like, I don't even know what I consider myself. I definitely consider myself a libertarian, although I'm in the sense of anarcho-capitalism would be nice, and if we could achieve that, like, a thousand years from now, great, I'm all for it. That's fantastic. I think that is the end goal. However, we're talking here and now, and here and now, we need to just focus on preserving our society. It's not even close to minarchism, but it is far closer than other possibilities. It could be like much more communist. It could be much more fascist. Those things we have to focus on. We have to preserve what we have now because we we still seem to have like remnants of an individualist 
culture, a culture that generally supports capitalism. And while that's there, we need to hold on to that. We cannot lose it because that is bad if we drift in the wrong direction. Now, like we're not talking about going to an ANCAP society. Now we're just talking about holding on to what we have and making sure we're not going in the wrong direction, which we seem to be going. So if we can get ourselves just on the right track, like I'm fine with that. That's, what's we're, that's what we're talking about now is just getting ourselves right on the right track. And that comes to like the United States. It's not the best country in the world. The government is pretty dang tyrannical, but it could be a lot worse. And that's what we value now. We value how close we are to minarchism or anarcho-capitalism. Again, not that close, but we're far closer than where we could be. What else do I have? Something that Lauren said about 10 times, which I only really started understanding and agreeing with again in the last year or so, which is politics is downstream from culture. And this seems to be something like a left-right divide where the left, again, super generalizing here, but the left seems to think you influence culture with politics and the right seems to think that you influence politics with culture. So Lauren's whole thing is the culture matters. The culture is super important and Larkin doesn't seem to really focus on that. The thing is, he's, I'll, I'll touch on this later, like, if you have a culture that is very collectivist, that is very socialist, then it doesn't matter if the government collapses or not. I mean, if the government collapses, you might celebrate that, but the people then that are left over, society is going to be like, okay, we need to build a socialist society. We need to recreate a government. We need to put in another state. We need to build our own state to replace this. Whereas if you have an individualist society, if you were to have a libertarian or ANCAP society, as in, I'm not talking the structure, but I mean the ideology of like um, the majority of the people. If most of the people were individualist, capitalist, um, libertarian, then if the state collapsed, they would all get together and be like, okay, let's, let's figure this out. Can we have an ANCAP society? If not, can we have a minarchist society? They're going to talk about, let's try to have as free of a society as possible. Whereas, again, a communist, a communist culture, they'll be like, okay, let's bring back the state. Of course, they won't call it the state. They'll call it, um, they'll call it an an, they're an ancom society, an anarchist society with um, no property or anything, and that just sounds absolutely god awful to me. That is not somewhere. Even if it did work, I wouldn't want to live there. That sounds atrocious. But that's the thing. Like the culture matters so much because here you'll see Larkin later on or celebrating like the collapse of the state, and Lauren saying like, hey, no, that's not something we immediately want to cheer because that's not always a good thing depending on the culture. Is the culture going to create, rise up and create an, a, a new like incredibly authoritarian culture, a new authoritarian government, or are we going to have a free society? It all depends on the culture. Third thing and last thing before I play a clip from the debate, um, imaginary line. He talks about the imaginary line. This isn't in the clip here, but it's later on in the debate. Towards the end, he talks about um, like why, why the US border? Like, why not any different border? Why not a border that's 10% smaller than the U.S.? Why not 10% larger? Why not the Mexico? Like, why the U.S. border? Why this so-called imaginary line? And the reason for that is, well, one thing is just because, hey, we can enforce it. Like, that's the one that's... We can discuss, like, hey, what if we enforce the border except for New Mexico? Like, just form a border around the state of New Mexico and and um, open that up. But... I mean, that's so, that's just like, why do that? Why just, we're being practical here. We're talking, that's the border that everyone seems to agree is a border. Um, so let's protect that one. Like, let's, let's protect that one. That is what's important. And I would say the second reason then is um, society. Like, if people come in, the, the, like, I know there is an argument that like, oh, people are crossing the 50 states peacefully and like there's no border patrol at the 50 states and isn't that great? Like, why not? Why aren't people complaining about that? Well, generally, I wouldn't be for putting border controls on the 50 states, although if each state wants to do that, that's up to them. But the thing is, like, if someone comes to California, if you have mass immigration into Texas and they're all leftists, like mass immigrants on to Texas, they're leftists, well, that affects me. That affects people like me in Pennsylvania because we have a federal government that has that um that allows like a um a state like Texas if it were to turn blue to influence federal law which affects me and that's the whole reason for it is because they will affect the federal government and encourage more laws that harm me but that's the that's the the short of it all right so i'm going to play like 
I have three clips, but they're all one after the other. So the first one I will play until what? 1250 to 1348. If you want to bring it up, follow along, but I will play it right here. You should be able to listen to it. Um, my note here is it's a guess. So <laughs> listen to what he's saying. And that, that, that'll be my, my point here is it's a guess peaceful people that are just looking to defend themselves, whereas if you collapse borders, there is a 100% chance of your state collapsing into complete tyranny, a 100% chance of the welfare state collapsing, a 100% chance of your democracy being compromised, a 100% chance, in my opinion, of foreign cultures invading and destroying your culture. Um, most of them were good things. I want democracy to collapse. I want the state to collapse. But your guesses... Your guesses about a 100% chance are exactly as useful as the liberals saying, if we don't disarm everybody, every, every you know, tiny little car accident will end in a shootout. But their guess does not justify the initiation of violence. Neither does your guess justify the use of violence against millions of people you do not know, whose only sin is wanting to step across an imaginary line, the only significance of which is that it defines a piece of dirt that a frickin' ruling class claims is their territory. As I okay. It's a guess. <laughs> so what he is saying, if you heard him, hopefully that, that picked up, because I can't hear it. I just have to remember what he said then. <laughs> um, it's a guess, he's saying that like what Lauren's just making a guess and I think he did bring up gun control too like they're making a guess that um, gun control would be better it's all just a guess and that's just wrong <laughs> like it, we're not talking about guesses we're not talking about just like oh I think this will happen just because it seems like it might happen no I mean that's what that's what predictions are we're talking about a, a hypothesis we're looking at the research we're looking at the statistics we're looking at what will happen what could likely happen and Lauren is saying this will happen like she's talking about this will 100% chance or 99% chance will happen and that is very important and as opposed to gun control like it doesn't matter what people think it matters what's going to happen there is an objective truth and of course when we look at the when we look at the statistics we're seeing people coming across the border at least from the southern border are coming there's a ton of them coming and they all seem to be disproportionately supporting more totalitarian authoritarian regimes so they're going to come in they're eventually going to start voting they're going to become a larger portion of the population that tends to vote again for more totalitarian regimes and that's the whole problem is that these people are coming in and the, like you can't take down the state like that you can't achieve an ANCAP society by bringing in people that are opposed to anarcho-capitalism and again not just talking about like for him, I mean, to, to Larkin, all of these people coming across the border, minus one or two, are going to be statists. The vast, vast majority of them are, by his definition, statists. So an even larger, to him, an even larger proportion of these people are terrible. But Lauren's just saying these people are more authoritarian than her. They want, again, a bigger welfare state. They're going to, like, strain the welfare system. And that is a problem. And it's not just a guess. It's statistics. Like, that's what we're looking at. It's not just a guess. So that doesn't matter. Okay, next thing, 1348 to 1411. Um, Lauren will bring up Venezuela there. I said earlier, when I, when I say the welfare state collapses, when I say our democracy collapses, I don't mean the state disappears and I don't mean those institutions disappear. I mean they stop working as effectively in the sense that we would all be living in a Venezuela type situation if we had open borders and we had our governments repeatedly giving our money away. We would be in complete poverty and collapse and the government would be far more totalitarian than it is now. Did you just... Okay, Venezuela, that, that made me think of something actually that's very interesting. So I know Larkin's, he will talk about later, like why is the, that, that'll be my third clip, why is the welfare state collapsing such a bad thing? Why don't you want it to collapse? And that, that's another important thing because he talks, again, like as an anarchist, why wouldn't you want the welfare state to collapse? You want the government to collapse. But the whole thing is look at Venezuela. The government is in bad shape there. The government massively inflated their currency they're in bad shape people are starving to death it's it's just totally awful there but again the government is like near collapse pretty much the government is not doing well and you think like if, if Larkin were if Larkin were it seems consistent here he would be celebrating what's going on in Venezuela he would be saying yes it's bad now but soon the state will collapse and then everything will be great as soon as the state collapses everything will be wonderful they'll have an ANCAP society they'll see that the welfare state didn't work 
they'll see the error of their ways and this will be great and I mean I don't follow Larkin Rose that much um, but I have like in the little bit that I followed him I haven't seen him say anything like that I haven't seen him celebrate Venezuela because of what will happen eventually because we know that's not going to happen we know that the people in Venezuela, at least we can tell some of them, might look at this and they'll say, well, that didn't work. Socialism didn't work. Big government didn't work. I guess that's that's not something we can do. We'll have to try some other system. That Some people might be thinking that, but the vast majority of them will say, huh, that didn't work. We need a socialist government. We need a new government. We need a new state that'll protect us this time. The problem was the state was corrupt. We'll have to create a non-corrupt state, one that supports the people. Who knows what government will rise up after this whole Venezuela thing happens, which who knows when that'll stop. Who knows how long um, people will continue to starve. It's absolutely atrocious. But I'm not looking at Venezuela and saying, okay, all this is awful, but we're going to get an ANCAP society. No, because the people, the culture there is still very left-wing still socialist they are going to support the same system that brought all this down i mean this time fewer people might but there's still going to be plenty of people that will say we'll just have to try it again we'll have to look at what caused it chances were it's oh we didn't do it right we didn't do it the right way we'll need a big government with a welfare state all over again and we'll just start over that's what's going to happen so by bringing about the fall of the welfare state here and by bringing about the the collapse of the state in venezuela Nobody's saying that's a good thing. Like, it's just, it's it's all unnecessary pain. It's all unnecessary misery. It's horrible. Like, there, there's no benefit to this at all. But that, that's my point there. Now, again, this is the, the last clip here. He does, or they do talk about, once again, the collapse of the welfare state. You just allege that the end of the welfare state causes poverty? No, the end of the actual means that the welfare is being given out when the resources are spread too thin when government the government is resources? trying to give them to far too many people no 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 the people's that when they're being redistributed how does my money disappear because somebody comes in and applies for government welfare and makes the welfare state fall over because they up the fees and then the government needs more money because they are having to give more into welfare except that's not how it happens that's not how it happens that's not how it works that's not how it works that's not how welfare works we don't up the fees every year to make up for more and more immigrants coming until in because last time i checked the statistics agree with me until people disobey but you the, it, it's interesting this i didn't see coming it's interesting that you're basically talking about the fall of the state as the scary thing we want to avoid i don't give a crap about the welfare state Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying my first two reasons were neither of those things are going to happen. Okay. So in the real world, do you want to get, how do you intend on getting rid of borders? Do tell. Okay, big disagreement here <laughs> on whether the collapse of the welfare state is a good thing. And I already mentioned that. I already pretty much am just restating everything I already said, but I thought that clip was important. That the collapse of the welfare state isn't necessarily a good thing. Like, we're not talking about the government realizes it can't cover everything. The government realizes it's running out of money. The government realizes it's in trouble. The welfare state can't function. There are too many people going on welfare, so we're just going to have to stop using welfare, and the government's going to cease its welfare program, and people won't have to pay taxes for it anymore. That's not what's going to happen. Unfortunately, what's going to happen is over time, more people will be on welfare. Those people will vote for politicians that'll keep the welfare system, that'll raise taxes, that'll go further into debt. The government is going to do that same thing. It's going to raise taxes. It's going to get money wherever it can. It's going to create new taxes. It's going to keep giving these people welfare. People will continue to vote for them. It'll be a continued cycle of just the welfare state getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually lots of people get hurt because it can't afford that anymore. I mean, what's going to happen when Social Security runs out? I have no idea. I mean, there's tons of things that could happen. All I know is it won't continue. <laughs> I know that, that we could inflate the currency massively until the dollars are worth pretty much nothing. Because again, even like even when we have to admit, like it's pretty clear now, Social Security cannot continue. It absolutely cannot continue and will definitely fail in the next, what, 10, 15, 20 years. So, I mean, when that time comes, when it is quite obvious, again, it's obvious already, but when it is just blatantly like, hey, this thing's going to die in like a year, 
what are politicians going to do? Which politician is going to stand up and say, okay, we got to shut it down? Which, because it can't just be one, which group of politicians are going to stand up and say, okay, we got to phase this thing out. We ran out of time, so we're going to have to phase it out rather quickly. It's going to be very painful. It's going to be very miserable. But you know what? We're going to have to do it. No one's going to do that. No politician's going to do that because it's not in the best interest of anyone to be the bad guy. Because you know what the people are going to do when someone tells them, hey, that thing we promised you, <laughs> sorry, you're not getting it. They're going to get mad. And they're not going to be like, dang, the welfare state didn't work. They're not going to be like, dang, Social Security didn't work. What they're going to say is, I want my money. <laughs> and I'm going to get it, whether you have to raise taxes on the rich, you have to raise taxes on whoever, you have to do whatever you can. I just want my retirement money. I want the Social Security I was promised. I want the Medicaid I was promised, the Medicare. Bad things will happen. And we can't celebrate that as the collapse of the welfare state because the welfare state will feed off of that. It will get more powerful. It will go and get as big as it possibly can until it just collapses under its own weight. And that is not a good thing. And lots of people are going to suffer. So the things Lauren is saying is that the collapse of the welfare state is going to hurt a lot of people. And chances are we're just going to get a new welfare state. Who knows? By then, the government will have to expand its power. It'll have to expand with a greater infrastructure to be able to control the people because it needs more taxes. It's going to need more. It's going to control more. That is not a good thing. And again, all these people on welfare, all these people, um, all this mass immigration, the people that tend to support more authoritarian regimes, they're going to be like, hey, we need a powerful, strong government to do this for us, to maintain the welfare state. It is not Good. The way Larkin sees it, it's like, oh, if the welfare state collapses, that means there's no more welfare state. That's great. That's not how it works. I mean, if we could get rid of the welfare state tomorrow, I would gladly do it <laughs> if we could. Because um, that's what's going to happen eventually. I'd like, honestly, like, I'd like to phase it out. I don't know what Larkin's position on this, but on this is, but um, if I had the option of either, like, bam, it's gone tomorrow and nobody gets their check or we phase it out over the next 10 years, I'd phase it out. Because a lot of people are going to get hurt if we just stop it suddenly. However, Larkin can certainly make the point that, oh, the fact that you, you're taking 10 years to phase it out, that's 10 more years of government theft, as opposed to just ending it right now. But it's like, yeah, well, what about these people? Like, it'll end eventually, but you gotta, like, you want to phase it out as easily as possible so the least amount of people get hurt. And they understand that this can't work. But um, that's really my point. Like, after this, Larkin did not look very good, in my opinion. I mean, again, like, if you're watching this video, you thought Larkin Rose won. Explain to me why. If you thought Lauren did terribly, explain to me why. I mean, I'm, I like to consider myself an ANCAP in the sense that I believe that's the long-term solution. I don't know if it can work or not. I'd like to keep going there slowly over time and see what happens and try to find our way there. And I actually wrote an article. Um, this was my first Being Libertarian article ever. I'll leave that in the description. I wrote one called um, Realism or Idealism. Why not both? And probably could have been a better title at the time. I am awful at titles. Uh, but it was just about how you need two sets of people. You need the people that say, this is what the ideal society is. This is the most moral society. This is the society we want to aim for. Then you need another group of people saying, this is how we get there. When talking about a free society, Larkin's probably very good on that. Again, I don't watch that much of his stuff. I've seen clips here and there. Um, I used to follow him on, him on Facebook. I don't think I do anymore. But that's, that's the thing. You need two groups of people. One to talk about what the future is, look, to give us the goal. The, their idea is to plan the goal. Their job is to plan the goal to get to. And it's the job of the realist to say, okay, how do we get there in the easiest, most efficient most like harmless way possible how do we get there and that's that's like i think those people were equally important because again without a goal the realists are pointless without a future goal to aim towards without a set of principles to aim for there's no like the people the realists will just go around in circles and just be pragmatic on everything and nothing will get done but again the idealists like Lauren brought it up to him like what have you done for anarchy what have you done to achieve this and he brings up he's converted lots of people which is great I'm not going to discount that but I think it's much more the time is much more important here time we have much less time than he thinks we do and we can't just slowly like we can't gain another hundred anarchists a year we can't gain another thousand libertarians a year that is not enough we need way more way faster and we need solutions now 
We need the best way to deal with what we have now. And Larkin seems to take the position of like, okay, these are my principles. I don't care what happens. I don't care like if we have to go through 10 iterations of an anarcho-communist society, 10 iterations of a Soviet Union or a, like another Venezuela. He's like, I don't care as long as these are my principles and I will advocate for them, which I have to respect in a certain sense. But again, like looking at the looking at the outcomes of that, like people are going to get hurt. <laughs> Lots of people that it's going to be a very rough ride. And I accept that, that no matter what, it's going to be a rough ride. But what's important is finding the best path there, the best way to convince people, the best way to work with what we have. And at the moment, we cannot have open borders. The government will have to do it. Or the like, if the free market wants to do that, if a bunch of, if a bunch of people want to line up at the border and enforce it, just a bunch of private citizens, I am totally fine with that. If you want to, pri if Trump came out and said, okay, we're going to privatize border security, I'd be like, great, fantastic, privatize border security. But again, we're working with what we got, and to enforce the borders is far less tyrannical than just to let all these people in that are all disproportionately far left, um, radical, like authoritarian people. And I don't hate these people. I don't think they're horrible people. These people crossing the border, I don't think they're awful human beings. I don't hate them. I don't hate the people crossing the borders. I like It's just that you can't come here. It's like the people that are going to come here, use welfare, um, vote for very authoritarian policies, that's not good. And I've, I've read, like, um, the Cato Institute actually did a whole... Um, one of their Cato journals. They did a whole one dedicated to immigration. I read the whole thing cover to cover. And the one thing they didn't bring up was voting or ideology. Which um, I guess they did. From what I can tell, they just they kept talking about immigrants in general, which I don't like. Like, I'm talking about immigrants crossing the southern border. That's what a lot of these people are talking about. They're talking about immigrants from totalitarian cultures, like um, across the southern border or especially in the Middle East. These people that gen just tend to support very authoritarian policies. Again, it's like, what's gonna ha what do you think is going to happen to the um, LGBTQ community if you brought in a ton of people that were all like, yeah, gays are bad. <laughs> like, these are all terrible. Like, yeah, the gays are terrible people. They deserve to be beat up in the streets. It's like, we don't want those people here. No, we don't want those people here. That's not good for our culture. That's not good for a free society. You cannot have a free society by bringing in people that are like, yeah, freedom's bad. Which, I get, again, that's a very simplistic way of putting it. But um, I think I made my point. I probably rambled on for far too longer. But, yeah, watch the debate. I thought it was very interesting. Whether No matter what side you're on, whether on, you're on Larkin's side or Lauren's side, watch the debate. It's always good to question what you believe, especially considering these people are on kind of polar opposites when it comes to borders, but agree on many other things. But um, I thought Lauren won. Oh, last comment. Dear God, anarcho-capitalists, Learn to answer questions in 10 seconds or less. <laughs> That's something. If you watch the debate, watch the Q&A period. These people are like, okay, time to tell my life story before I get to my question. That's just <laughs> nit nitpicking, something that bugged me so much. But yeah, um, like the video if you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what you think. Again, like, let's have a, a borders discussion in the comments section if you watch this video. Um, let me know what you think. Again, watch the, the debate. Um, subscribe for more. It really helps me out. And thanks for watching.